screen.
tonight. We just want to thank you for the privilege of assembling ourselves together here in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, our Heavenly Father, for this great day that you've given to us. We thank you for the witnessing this morning of, of two that came and dedicated their life to you, their souls were saved, and they were baptized. We thank you for the giving of baptism and what it means to each of us that we are living, died, buried, and resurrected again as Jesus Christ was. Thank you for this beautiful ordination. We thank you again, our Heavenly Father, for the privilege of just being here tonight. We just pray, Lord, that there can be one here tonight that knows not Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior of our lives, that you might touch, just touch them also in the way that you touch those this morning. Continue to be with us as we go through our singing service tonight. We ask that you be with the pastor as he brings a message to us tonight. Just open our hearts and see the thing that you will tell us to come tonight. Forgive us now, Heavenly Father, for those things that we do that's against your will. For we ask all we bless you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you. Raining in the sheets. If your soul is a fire, you'll go out and win the lost. Amen.
you're about to lose her right here, but don't ever give in, don't ever give up. God is with you and you'll overcome. The mountain will tell you that you can't make it over. It will try to convince you that it's way too high. Just have me your God is. Just try to remember all the trials he's brought you through. And when his power gave you strength for the journey, the very hour you needed it to. So don't be discouraged. failed you. So go on and climb. The mountain will tell you that you can't make it over. It will try to convince you that it's way too high. Just how big your God is, though you feel defeated, know that God keeps His promise. So you tell the mountain, just how
it was BBC East. Okay? And uh, we can do that electronically, I think, too. Okay? The second thing is, is that we allow our facilities to be used uh, throughout the year for several things because I think we ought to be an outreach community. Uh, one of them is that on Mondays, if you come up here, you want to listen, listen to people learn how to play string instruments. Uh, you come up here at 9 o'clock on Monday and listen to the, uh, the homeschool orchestra from uh, FM Music Studios. And they come out and they, and they do this from 9 to 12 in the morning. They won't do it through a VBS. Okay? okay. <laughs> That's all that one song. Yeah. Uh, but also, uh, we allow the Homeowners Association uh, next door to us to use our fellowship hall. And in return, their gratitude, they have given us a whole bunch of cookies. Okay? So tonight, after church, go back and have a cookie in the fellowship hall, courtesy of the Homeowners Association uh, that James is part of and, and that they use the facility. So there, there you go. Okay? And uh, we also have some refreshment for that, too. And then you can go out and try the faucet. Okay? You'll see that time is hot and cool is cool. Okay? Takes a little while for it to warm up, but it'll get there. Uh, these are the prayer requests. Uh, Melanie just texted me uh, right before church and that she's not feeling well, so pray for Melanie. Uh, also, this morning, uh, we're texted and uh, Cheryl Anderson lost her sister uh, up in Kansas City, Missouri. No more uh, information about that. So pray for comfort for the family and also for the rest of the Anderson family. Just pray for her family in general. Uh, continue to remember our shut-ins. Uh, Elsie, and, and it's good to see Bayer tonight, uh, but also for Pippa and everybody else, for Sherry Boosterberg and for Rock Mims. Uh, this morning I also got a text uh, from a pastor friend of mine. His son, uh, Stephen Lewis, was involved in a motorcycle accident uh, where he did a deer and uh, broke some bones and is going to have surgery tomorrow. So pray for a successful surgery on that. And while we're doing that, also pray for those uh, Tro Trojanowski's surgery on the 5th of uh, July. And God answered prayer. We prayed the other night about transportation parks. It's taken care of. So God answers prayer, and that's a good thing there. So those are the, the initial prayer requests. Ricky uh, asked for prayer for his mom and dad. Uh, pray, God, for the repeal of uh, Roe v. Wade, but the fight's not over yet. It's just starting. Uh, for uh, Tony Apulito, okay, uh, having surgery this week to remove a tumor on his pancreas. Uh, pray for Steve Brantley for health, our country, uh, for uh, our family, uh, for our church and revival, for BBS, and then Cassie is also traveling to Oklahoma City to present some research. So pray for these requests. Uh, Judy Lawson uh, has a uh, prayer request for Toya, uh, uh, Toya Park Carter. Uh, she's got a biopsy of not coming on on June, July the 7th. So pray for that. Also praise Bobby Bynum, who had the COVID positive, and he's also had pneumonia. He's 90 years old. He's out of isolation from COVID. That's a good thing. Uh, also pray for Calvary Baptist Church. We talked about that this morning. That's Brother Jerry Phillips' uh, church. He's the pastor up there at Arlington, Texas. They basically went virtual today because of COVID. It's not done yet. Okay. I have a feeling it's going to come up and ramp itself up right about the time of the election. Yeah, I, I, just, I just have that sense, don't you? Uh, so I uh, uh, just pray uh, just pray that uh, this church will be able to get back uh, into in-person meetings. Uh, continue to pray for those that are having health concerns, for Josephine and her knees, for Ricky's back, Katie, her foot, Diane Payne Management, and others. And if you have any unspoken requests, you can raise your hand. I uh, see those hands. Wasn't it a good service this morning? Yeah. See two people get baptized, yeah. and one confessing to Christ, and that's a wonderful, wonderful thing. So, uh, you know, let's pray for revival. Let's pray for BBS. Uh, that we'll see many, many, many more people saved. Amen. Amen. So let's go to the Lord Prayer and ask Him to meet these requests and also for those that need salvation. Heavenly Father, Lord, Lord, we do thank you that you are bigger than any mountain that's put before us. Lord, help us to have the faith, Lord, to overcome that, Lord, through your victory. Lord, we ask you with these requests right now. Lord, I lift up Stephen Lewis, Lord, and ask that you just help him recover. 
more from this motorcycle action, but the surgery tomorrow would go well. Bob, I pray to be with Rose and her upcoming surgery and be successful. Lord, I pray that be with Don a red outboard and his upcoming surgery so that they would be successful. Father, I pray to be with Wanda, uh, Rena's daughter, Lord, help her recover from her car accident. Lord, I ask to be with Sherry and give her grace, Lord, and help uh, her, Lord, be able to get out of rehab, Lord, and go back home, Lord, and maybe even come to here. Lord, I pray that be with Rock Mims and just give him peace of mind. Father, I pray that you provide comfort, Lord, for Cheryl, Lord, and her family, Lord, and for the immediate family, Lord, and her sister. Lord, I pray that through, through the, this time, Lord, people just draw close to you. Lord, I ask that you just be with uh, other needs, Lord. Lord, I just lift up uh, uh, Nancy right out to you right now and just ask that you just give her a grace. Father, we just ask that you just uh, help our country to have wisdom, Lord. Lord, we uh, pray to you, Lord, for the legal victory that was uh, won. And Lord, we just ask that uh, right would continue to be done. Father, I pray that our leaders would turn to you, Lord, and that they would do right. Father, I pray for others that have health needs, for Josephine and her knee, and Ricky and his back. Father, for Katie and her foot, for Diane and her uh, pain management issues, Lord, for others that uh, are suffering, Lord, uh, those in um, Calvary Baptist Church, Lord, uh, that are suffering with COVID, Lord, I just ask you to give recovery for your glory. Lord, I pray to be with Toya Carter, Lord, this upcoming biopsy, that uh, it would not be cancerous, Lord. Lord, I pray that you just be with Bobby Bynum, now helping Lord to recover from the pneumonia, Lord, and we praise you, Lord, for helping him get out of COVID isolation. Lord, I just ask that you be with uh, those that are traveling, Lord, be with uh, D uh, David and Joseph, Lord, be with the Suttons, Lord, Cassidy, as she goes to Oklahoma City for this research presentation. Lord, I just pray that you just give everyone Safety, Lord, as they travel. And if Father, that just bring them back safe. Lord, I ask that you just be with uh, other health issues, Lord, for Steve Brantley, Lord, uh, for uh, Tony uh, Aquilito, Lord, who's having surgery, Lord, for this removal of this tumor. Lord, I just pray that it would be successful also. Lord, I pray that you just be with our church. Lord, help us, Lord, to follow you. Father, I pray that you be with our family, Lord. And Lord, I pray that you be with each family of the church and by Satan on our behalf. Father, help us, Lord, to have your Holy Spirit just reign in our lives. Lord, I just ask to be with the unspoken request. Lord, I ask that each hand was lifted up, Lord, uh, has a special need that you know and that you meet it, Lord, for your glory. Father, provide your grace and your mercy. Father, provide your healing and protection. Father, provide your provision. Lord, I, pr I pray that you bring restoration and reconciliation, Lord, that you bring families back together. Father, that you be with those that uh, are unable to get out, Lord, that they would just follow you. Lord, I ask that you just be with uh, those that need you most, the lost. Father, I pray that you would abandon Wendy and Zach. Father, I just ask that uh, you be with John and Gerald, and Dan and Valerie, Terry Burgat and Brett, for June and Brianna and Chris and Billy for Bobby Gentry and for Alex, for Harold, Amanda, Andrew, and Paul, for Ray and Ray Valdez, for, Ray Gar for Roy Garza, for Julio and Mitchell, for Carlos and Vincent, Carlos and Dee, Father for Patty and Kenny, Father for Tony and Tony Jr., for Delonte and AJ, Dana, Sarah, Father for Pete and Allison, Scott, Travis, Mike, Mike's son, Ernest and Oscar, for Michael Ramos, for Marguerite, for Nathalie, Father, for these and others that do not know you. Lord, lost family members, lost co-workers, Lord, or unless someone is here tonight does not know you, Lord, I pray that tonight would be the diet of their salvation. Father, someone listening on the internet that's struggling, Lord, that you just help them, Lord, through salvation, that they would see their, their need to call out to you for Lord, we just ask that you speak with our church and DBS. Father, pray that you with each worker, Lord, and each thing that be done, Lord, bring glory and honor to you. Help us, Lord, to follow you with all of our heart. Be with Melanie, help her headache to go away. Father, be with others that are struggling. And Lord, just help us tonight, Lord, as we study your word. 
and we answer people's questions a little bit. We would just follow the answer. We thank you. We love you. We give all glory and honor and praise because you and you alone are worthy. We ask the same in Jesus' name. Amen. As we said this morning, uh, earlier this month, I got a list of five questions. And, you know, I remember several years ago, we could put out cards and I would answer the questions on Sunday night. And these are pretty decent questions, but they all center around the idea of discernment. So I want to answer these five questions. It's not going to be in a deep theological way, but and just general stuff that we could be equipped to give an answer. You know, that's what we're supposed to do, be equipped to give an answer to what the hope that is in us. And so this is really about spiritual discernment. I'll tell you what, in this day and age, these last days, it is something that we all need. So my main points tonight are these questions. I kind of made them into a more of a sermon format, but I'll actually show you the questions. And so the first one was this. How do I get discernment? How do I see God work? How do I understand that what I'm doing is the right thing? Well, how do I get discernment? Well, spiritual discernment only comes from one source. One source of truth, and that's who? God. It comes from the Spirit of God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, a very familiar passage, it says, but the natural man, or the carnal man, there's another verse that talks about the carnal man, but the natural man, one who is not looking for God, but one who is not saved, receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. So you can't understand the Spirit of God the truth of God, unless you, unless you have a relationship with God. For they are what? Foolishness unto Him. You know why? Because His thinking gets in the way. His thinking gets in the way, and His thinking negates any sort of faith. For they are foolishness unto Him, neither can He know them, because they are what? Spiritually discerned. This morning we talked about truth. And we can know truth. We can trust in the truth. We can seek truth. But you have to have the Spirit of God. And the only way to have the Spirit of God is to have Him dwell in you. And the only way that you can have it dwell in you, Him dwell in you, is to have a relationship with God's Son, Jesus. <coughs> so the first thing is, how do I get discernment? We need to realize that it comes from the Spirit of God. It doesn't come out of a book that some man wrote. It comes out of the book that God wrote. Amen. Because it comes also from the Word of God. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, another familiar verse. Says, I know all these things. But you know something? It's one thing to know. It's another thing to apply it. It's another thing to basically give it an apt answer to somebody. It says, for the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing the sun or soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. See, if you don't have the Spirit of God, you cannot understand the Word of God. Because He teaches us all things. Now, something else you got to work at it. You know, you can't take an instant Jesus pill or a Holy Spirit pill and then all of a sudden, voila! I know everything. Now it works in the movies, folks. And it requires spiritual maturity. You know, Paul told the Corinthian church, he says, why don't you grow up and stop acting like that? He tells, and he writes in Hebrews, he says, why don't you just get on the meat and get off the milk? See, we, and unfortunately I think a lot of people live a superficial spiritual life. We're supposed to have the, we're supposed to understand the deep things of God. 
And we preach on that too. In Hebrews chapter 5, verse 14, it says, But strong meat belongeth to him that are full age. You can't stay a baby Christian and expect to get the discernment that you need in order to live a God in life. It won't work. It says, But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use. See, that's the point. You know, if you don't lose your muscles, you lose them, right? You turn out like me. Okay? But we need to use things. We need to, like, iron sharpen the iron. We need to sharpen the countenance of our friends. But we need to use this and have spiritual exercise. Paul tell Timothy, he says, bodily exercise, what profiteth not little. It says, but even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So you want discernment, you've got to come to God. If you want discernment, you have to have the Holy Spirit say, come into my life and fill me up. Understand that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And start looking for God to work in your life by looking in His Word, coming to His church, surrounding yourself with people who are of like mind. And grow up. Amen. That's how you get the soul. Now the other four questions come off of <coughs> this. Discernment allows one to try the spirits. So the question is, how do you try the spirits on everyday questions or problems? I've said this before and I will say it again. Every decision we make is a spiritual. We have a choice to either get closer to God, follow His will, or we have a choice to try to do it ourselves. As we mature, we find out that it's more of Him and less of me. What did John the Baptist say? He must increase and I must decrease. So how do you try the spirits on everyday questions and problems? Well, the first thing is why do I need to? Why do I need to do this? On every little thing? Yeah. On every little thing? First John chapter 4 verse 1 says, Beloved, believe not what? Every spirit. But try the spirits whether they are of God because many false prophets are gone out into the world. You know, the Bible says that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. In God's eyes, a little sin is just as bad as a big sin. A little action is just as good a test of faith as a big action. And why do we need it? To test our faith to see if we're going to follow God or not. Why? I want to. Why would I want to have God involved in every decision in my life? Because that's what the Bible says to do. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31, remember that Paul is writing to a baby church. He's writing to church that have a bunch of division in there. They had a bunch of immorality in the church. They had a bunch of spiritual problems in there. He said, you don't have discernment. He said, I am a Paul and I am a Christ. And I am a Paulus. He says, look, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31, he says, whether therefore ye eat or drink, is talking about what do I eat? Do I eat meat offered to idols or not? Okay. Do I do that? You know? Do I, can I buy that or can I not buy it? That's a common place. We all need to eat, right? It says, whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever. Whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. You know, if you're cleaning your house, do it the best way for the glory of God. If you're going to work, 
Do it the best way for the glory of God. If you're making a decision, do it the best way that God be glorified. It takes discernment. So why I need to? Because there's a lot of false spirits out there. And it just takes a little bit to let Satan get a foothold in your life. On something that's not. We can see the front of assault. It's the sneaky attacks that we have to worry about. Why do I want to? Because everything should be done for the glory of God. How do I do it? How do I have discernment in all these little things? Well, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 13 says, right next to verse 14, which we've already used, it says, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing what? Spiritual things with spiritual. You know, God has equipped us, the Bible equips us with everything that we need for what? Life and God. Everything we need for what? Life. Life. Is that the small stuff? Yeah. <coughs> now, the issue here is, is what we're talking about. We're talking about spiritual discernment, but we're also talking about a spirit-filled life. God is either Lord of all of you, or He's not Lord of all. He's got to be Lord of every part of your body, every action that you take. That sounds pretty radical. It is radical. But that's how the early church was. And that's why they did all these things. Unfortunately, that's why we may not be doing these things. So how do I do it? By comparing spiritual things but spiritual. And the issue is, what do I see afterwards? Well, I'll get the answer. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 6, it says, We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the what? Spirit of truth and spirit of error. Here's a question. If we have examples of Christians in our lives, which we should, they have to go down to the store. They have to go to certain places. They have to do things. And if we're doing things that are totally alien to what they do, one of them wrong. Because, you know, Ephesians 4 says that we all are one. One in unity of faith, one spirit, one baptism, one God. So, the sermon allows one to try the Spirit. And if you allow the Holy Spirit to come in your life, you seek God's Word, you start exercising that ability, you're going to see the differences between right and wrong, the little, little differences. And you won't take the shortcut anymore. You'll take the God cut. And that's what we need to do. So, how I get serve it? Oh, I talk about that. Discernment allows one to try the spirits that answers the question. Thirdly, discernment enables the perception of the proper use of the Word of God. The question is this. How do you make sure that you are not pulling verses out of the Bible that you have picked and not that God led you to? I'll tell you what. It's bad theology to say, Oh, God, help me! Oh, God. I'm in the index. That didn't work. <laughs> that didn't work. But there's a lot of there's a lot of things that people, who oh, I saw 16 on a sign and that led me to the 16th chapter of this book. Wait a second. Let's think about this. So this is a question about using the Bible. <coughs> we need to use the Bible skillfully. Okay? Now, in order to fight skillfully, you need to know what? How to fight. You need to know who the enemy is. You need to know where your weapons are. And you need to go from there. But there are several principles here that we need to understand about these verses. I've been counseling with someone who has an issue with this. And I suggest that a 
passage for them to read so they would get the answer. And then all of a sudden, phone conversation, well, this passage led me to this passage, and this passage led me to this passage, and this passage led me to this passage, and this passage led me to this passage. To this passage. I said, okay, what do they mean? I don't know. I don't know. And so I said, okay, let's talk about that. And so we went to the passage, the first passage I gave. I said, this is what it's all about. Now, God's kind of neat because he took to another passage, said the same thing. Said the same, and another passage said the same thing. Another passage said the same thing. So God's got not a sense of humor, but he want, when he wants us to learn something, mm -hmm. he's going to make sure we get it. Right. Okay? So the first principle here is the principle of content. Does it make sense? Does it make sense for what you're trying to figure out? In 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 20, it says, Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of what? Any private interpretation. There's a lot of people that would take a verse out of context and say this, okay? You know, there's the one about not letting women drive in Acts when they were in the tempest. And I said, we threw away everything and we let them drive. You know, how many all were in one accord and they make up all these things about this? Folks, what we need to understand is when we're using the Bible and we're searching the Bible, which we need to do for answers, and we come across a scripture and we think that we're led to the scripture, that scripture is going to mean something. His word will not come back void, which is another principle here. So, discernment enables perception of the proper use of the word of God because we're using the word of God it should make sense for what you're dealing with the second one is the principle of context so this is not taking the verse out of context does it apply does it really not only does it make sense I may not understand it but then the next thing is does it meet the need that I have here hmm. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16 says this it says all scripture is given by what inspiration of God, and is profitable. <laughs> profitable for what? Profitable for doctrine. What you should believe. Profitable for reproof. Ah, uh, I did something wrong. God's telling me that. For what? For correction. This is, I've gone off the what path. I didn't follow the instructions. Now I need to go back to the instruction book. For what? Instruction in righteousness. What? That the man of God should be what? Thoroughly furnished into what? Every good work. Well, there's that everything in all and all that other stuff. So you have the principle of context. Does it make sense? You have the principle of context. Does it apply to the problem? And then the next thing is, is the principle of completion. In Isaiah chapter 55, verse 11, it says this. It says, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. So, you pick a verse out of there, and it doesn't do anything for you. Not the right verse, right? In the wrong spot. When you pray about it, let the Holy Spirit guide you. Because my Bible tells me this, it will not return unto me void. But it shall accomplish that which I please. Here's another concept. God controls our life. That's the goal. His goal is to be conformed to His image. His goal is that we are transformed from glory to glory. To get more like Him. That's let patience have her perfect work that you may be perfect and entire lacking you know, wanting nothing. But it shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. If God leads you to Scripture, it's going to work. If you lead yourself to Scripture, 
It's not going to make sense. It's probably not going to apply. And it won't do what it needed to do in the first place. That makes sense? So, how is the, how do you get discernment from God? <clears throat> discernment allows one to try the spirits. Discernment take, enables perception of the proper use of the word of God. And the discernment enables perception of who is guiding you. There's an interesting story in Luke chapter 9, verses 52 through 56. Jesus is doing his earthly ministry, and he sends people ahead to the Samaritans. And in verse 52, it sent messengers before his face, and they went and entered into a village of Samaritans to make ready for him. Say, the Master is coming. The Messiah is coming. Jesus is coming. Get ready. Okay? Get ready. And they did not receive him because his face was as though he would go to Jerusalem. Okay? wasn't where Christ needed to be. But you know, sometimes we try to force Christ into where we want to be. We want him to be. Okay? And then when things don't go our way, we kind of get irritated. Look at this. And when his disciples, James and John, these are spiritual leaders. They wrote books in the Bible. Okay? They're just like us. But when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord... Wilt thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? Even as Elijah did, or Elias did. But look at verse 55. But he turned and rebuked them and said, Ye know not what manner of spirit ye are of. Okay? Now, we're pretty smart people in here, but can we say stupid things? Okay? We're pretty intelligent, but can we do dumb things? Yeah, we can. Look at Peter. Okay? It says, For the Son of Man has not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them, and they went into another village. Okay? But Christ said, This is not the plan. You need to be on page with me. Okay? So the question is this How do I know the difference in God speaking to me? The devil speaking to me, or my own head getting the better of me. Okay? How do I know? Once again, it's a discernment issue. Okay? Try the voices. Try the voices. John chapter 16, verse 13 says this. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will do what? He will guide you into what? All truth. For he will not tell speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Okay? Here's the test. Okay. There's three. There's a three-part test here to talk about who's speaking to me. Okay. First of all, is the person speaking consistent with the word of God? If some voice is speaking to you, telling you, "Well, I can live with this person and not be married," or God may be a boy and I want to be a girl, the word of God specifically comes against that. That's your voice talking to you, not God's voice. You know what's going on. Or it's the devil doing it. doesn't really matter. You're either for God or you're against Him. So the first test is it's consistent with the Word of God. The second one is consistent with the will of God. The Holy Spirit will guide you into what? All the truth. Oh, we sing this song. If He leads me, I will follow. So when you start going down a path, you ought to say the prayer, God, is this the path that I need to be on? <coughs> if that path is consistent with the Word of God, start walking down the path. 
if that consistent is, if that path is consistent with the will of God, continue down that path. If it's not what God wants you to do and you're still listening to him, he'll tell you to stop if you need to. He'll tell you to, oh, slow voice in the back. When you get off the right hand, this is the way, walk in. There's only one voice that we need to listen to, folks. God. God. And then the third thing is, it's consistent with the walk of God. But there's things in there that the Bible doesn't talk about. The Bible does, we don't get the clear feeling about the will of God, but the whole point about it is, would Jesus do it? You know, those bracelets, the what would Jesus do bracelets? You know, they have a great idea. The issue is, is that if we don't think Jesus would ever do that, then we shouldn't do it either. If Jesus would do that, we should do it. See, the Bible says, for him that knoweth to do good, doeth not to him as what? Sin. Sin. As much as is with you, do good. As much as you have opportunity to do good to all men, especially to what? Household faith. So is there any time that you should not do good? It's consistent with the word of God. It's consistent with the will of God, right? Is there any time that we should just basically say, ah, I don't care, I'm just going to do my own thing? Okay? It doesn't matter if it's the devil's voice or your voice. Oh, the Bible tells me in James chapter 1, every man is since when he's drawn away of his own lust. What is own lust and enticed? You know that statement about the devil making you do it? No, the devil gave you a choice. You chose to go down that path. And when lust is conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and when sin is finished, it what? Bringeth forth death. So try the voices. If you hear something, that's not consistent with the Word of God. Oh, I keep on coming back to that Word of God thing. You need to read it. God's Word does not come in cliff notes. Yeah, I've been guilty of that in college, especially in literary class. I don't want to read this 400 page novel. I don't get the cliff notes. It might work for college, but it won't work for God. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. It is profitable. All Scripture. Which means what? Oh. You need to read all of it. <coughs> so when someone comes up and says, well, the Bible says that cleanliness is next to God. It's not in there. Or money is the root of all evil. Close, but no. Or this. Or this. No, it's not in there. But how can you say, how do you know the spirit of truth in the spirit of error if you don't know the word of truth? How can you know the spirit of truth in the spirit of error if you're not being spirit led? The Bible says, walk in the spirit, you will not fulfill the you will not fulfill the what? Must the flesh. There is now therefore no condemnation to the Christ Jesus who walk in the spirit and not after the flesh. And then listen to what your heart's telling you. Now, here's a disclaimer. The Bible says the heart is desperately wicked and who can know it. Not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about the changed heart. You know, it, see, I thought, see, good, he has some discernment. But see, what happened was is that God took out a heart of stone and put in a heart of what? Flesh. He said, I'll write my law on their what? Hearts. 1 John chapter 3, verses 19 through 21 says this. And hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall what? Assure our hearts before him. For if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemns us not, then we have confidence towards God. So there's a fourth test. If you're doubting about it, don't do it. 
Don't do it until you get confirmation. It needs to be consistent with the Word of God. It needs to be consistent with the will of God, consistent with the walk of God, and there should be no doubt because we have confidence. Our heart condemns us not. We know exactly that we're on the right track. Make sense? So the sermon enables the perception of who is guiding you.
Trust in the Lord with what? All thy heart. Lean not into thy own understanding. How many ways? In all thy ways. Acknowledge Him. God should be in every piece of your life. Your decision processes. Your choices. Everything. He needs to be there. In all my ways acknowledge Him and He shall direct your path. And you will have the discernment to understand the right way and the wrong way. But if you don't try, and you don't exercise, and if you don't start, you'll never get it. You'll never get it. And you'll read other people's books instead of this book, and you're going to come up short. Okay? The issue is, discernment is something that we all need. Do we need discernment tonight? You can ask God. He gives all every good gift and every perfect gift coming from above. For the Father likes to whom there is neither shadow nor variableness of eternity. So we need to ask God to show us the way as individuals, as families, and as a church, even as a country. I think Chronicles 714 talks about Let's stand. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for this day. Lord, I just ask you this time of invitation. Father, just search our hearts and help us, Lord, just to follow you. We ask the same in Jesus' name.